Hello, this is Paolo and in this video I'm going to show you how to use Reality for Poser to control your lights in Lux while the image is rendering. So here I have a simple scene straight from the Poser content library right here. Let me show you. No, let's not dock it. Okay, so this is the content library and in the figures in the poser content and inside the vehicles there is this snub nose spaceship okay so i just added that model to the scene and i added a couple of lights so here is a top mesh light and here is a standard mesh light so if i look at the top mesh light Here we can see that it has been set to be very soft, while this light here is set to use the standard soft setting. So nothing too fancy, that's how they are positioned. And so I have my main camera, I have set a focal length of 40 millimeters, just to give a little more depth to this image otherwise it will be compressed and we can call reality and look at the materials i just changed a couple of things i turned some of the materials to be metal and um, i in generally i increased the glossiness so that the materials look a little shinier now in the lights, I have my two lights here, the top light and the side light, nothing else is enabled. So let's just do a render, the way things are in the standard configuration. And here is Lux, okay, it's loading all the textures, and now it's rendering, I'm gonna resize the image to fit in here and here is our image it's pretty nice but if i go in the light groups tab and i start moving this slider we see that there is only one slider i have two lights one slider that doesn't work so let's close this and see what we can do about this if we go in the lights tab we see that each light is in a group and this is a standard configuration for Lux. Each light belongs to a group. The name of the group is set automatically by reality, but you can change it. So if I want to have individual controls for my lights, I need to separate those lights in different groups. So here, the, the way we can change the name of the groups is very simple, but let me first go back to Poser. If I click on this light, just to see what name is attached to this light, I see this is called Mesh Light 1. Good, so I'm going to Reality. This is Mesh Light 1, and I'll call this Top. So I'm changing the name of the light group to be Top, and we see that the name is immediately changed also in the list. So now I can click on this other light and I call this side. So now I have top and side. These two lights are enabled. I can go and render my frame again. Quick export, launch Lux. And Lux is reading the scene, besides the scene with the middle click of the mouse. You know, if you middle click here, in the image, Lux will automatically resize the image to uh, fit. Oh, this is the wrong camera to use. So let me close this and go to Poser. Of course, I was setting this camera, so I'll click on Main and back to Reality and Render. Once again, we are loading the scene, I'm middle clicking in here to resize the image to fit. 
and here is our image. Now, if I go to the light groups, I have individual brightness, color, everything controls for each light. So for example, I can increase the side light. Now, this is nice. This is rather nice. I like this effect. And we can see I changed the floor to be highly reflective. That's just done by using the glossiness control. So this is actually a rather nice image. And we can change all kind of uh, settings for the lights. For example, I can try to turn this off. Very dramatic, on, off. This is nice too. I can change the color of the light. For example, if I want to give it a nice uh, reddish color. So I can go into picker and change the color of the light while it's running. Isn't this amazing? So I can go the opposite direction. I can have this bluish color. It's rather nice. Okay. So this is how you control lights in Lux via the light groups that you set in Reality 3. But it's not over. There are other interesting tricks that we can use. So let me close this. And uh, the image that we created up to this point is nice, but I kind of like to have a sort of a wraparound, nice diffuse light. And I know I could do it with IBL, the image-based lighting. Now, image-based lighting means that you usually have an image that creates a light source. But in Lux, we have even more flexibility. We don't even need the image, we can just use a color. And here, in reality allows you to set the color with a normal color picker. So I set this to use a light blue. I'm going to enable this light. It has its own IBL group automatically. You cannot change that. That's set for you by reality. We render the frame now, and we will see that in addition to our two lights, we will have a nice ambient wraparound light. There you go. So now we can do a couple of changes. We can modify the IBL intensity. And nothing is happening though. Why is the light not getting brighter? I'm like 212 times brighter than before and still looks exactly the same. Well, let's set this back to the normal value. The reason for this is right here in the tone mapping. Now, here is a, an interesting statement. You don't increase or decrease the brightness of lights to make your image brighter or darker. I know it seems like nonsense, but no, this is actually making sense. The exposure is what makes an image brighter or darker. The lights create highlights, create shadows, and together they have a relationship. Some lights are brighter than others, but the brightness or darkness of an image is set by the exposure and the exposure is controlled by this kernel parameter. By default, it is set to auto linear, which is basically your point and shoot camera, your camera phone uh, works, but it is just uh, a machine set exposure. Now you have to remember one thing, the exposure control is an artistic tool. Don't look for a second at that as a technical requirement. It isn't. It is an artistic tool. It's like any other brush in your set. If you don't use it, you're depriving yourself of a very important, fundamental, flexible, powerful artistic tool. So you don't want to do that. You want to have the best tools possible to create your images. And the brightness and darkness of an image, the mood of an image is largely controlled 
by the exposure. The exposure is how much light we are letting inside our virtual camera. So keeping the light equal, how much of that we let inside our virtual camera. And that is controlled by the linear tone mapper. So I click on linear and as you can see, I didn't change my lights, but the image is so incredibly bright now that it, almost everything is lost. This is because the exposure is too high. This is an overexposed image. So the exposure is controlled by three parameters. Forget the gamma here. Don't even look at that. Three parameters, the ISO, the shutter speed, and the f-stop. The f-stop is our aperture. Exposure is one term and the aperture is another term. Don't mix them up. Exposure means how much light we are letting inside the camera, how much we expose our camera sensor. In the old days was film. Now we use digital cameras so we can use in a, an analogy with the digital sensor. But the film ISO is still a parameter that you see today in every digital camera, even the point and shoot ones. So the ISO is the sensitivity of the film or the sensitivity of the sensor, how sensitive it is. Given a certain amount of light, how quickly that sensor reacts to the light. So it is measured in numbers and each number, higher numbers indicate a, a more sensitive sensor. And for example, a 100 ISO will be twice as sensitive as a 50 ISO. So for now, we're gonna keep it at 50. It's already overexposed. The shutter speed is an easy parameter to change. The shutter speed is basically the length in seconds or fractions of seconds of the shutter lifting from the closed position, exposing the sensor, and then shutting down again, hence the name shutter. So right now, we are exposing the sensor of our camera for a full one second, which is definitely too much. What happens if we drop down drastically to a one eighth of a second? Well, there is an improvement. It's not near to what we want, but it is definitely an improvement. So let's continue. One eighth of a second gave us a good success. So let's go even lower, one sixtieth of a second. Ha ha. So you see, we didn't change anything. We didn't change anything in the lighting. The lights are exactly the same. We didn't change their intensity, but now we have a better exposed image is still not good. Let's go to a 125th of a second, which is about half the light we are letting inside our camera. Oh, now we are looking at something really good. Every part of the image is nicely exposed. So as you saw, I didn't change the ISO. I only worked on the shutter speed. And this is the secret of using these parameters, if you're not familiar with them, if you didn't practice with a camera, this is the best piece of advice I can give you. Change one parameter at a time. In this case, we change the shutter, which is a very simple, intuitive operation. It works in seconds or fractions of seconds. Of course, uh, 1 60th of a second will be twice the amount of light that we let in with a 1 25th of a second. They are fractions. The f-stop can be used as well, but we're not gonna touch it for now. So now we have this image exposed correctly. We have our lights, we have our wraparound IBL light. We can change things like, well, maybe we can put this light a little brighter. and so on. So you can change all the parameters that you want, or we can change the color of the light. For example, I could, well, there is so much blue here that I could try to 
add some sort of a contrast by color using a di completely different color. So these tricks can be used to generate great images right in front of your eyes, right when the image is rendering directly in Lux. There is no need to re-render, there is no need to re-export. Everything is in your control. Remember to set your light parameters in reality. So you have your group, you can use IBL, you can use IBL without an image, just with the environment color, and can be any color you want. This is definitely a, an area where you can experiment and create a very interesting effects. So this is how you control the lights. I hope this video was helpful. My name is Paolo Ciccone for Preta 3D. Happy rendering.